Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode on H2 Geography or A-Level Geography from A-Level Lessons Online. So in today's episode, or today's part, part 3, we are going to be covering the Copenhagen climates. So what this basically is, is basically you're looking at the different climatic zones in the tropical region, which is required of your syllabus. Alright, so the first um, tropical climate that we're going to look at is is seriously really the simplest, okay? So we're going to look at the tropical rainforest. So this is otherwise known as the AF climate. So it's good to know this term, okay, because you can always use it as a short form in your essays or let's say if you come across a climograph, you may actually see such a term. So basically your tropical rainforest, the AF climate, is found generally at the equator. So in between 0 to 5 degrees north or south. So as a result, as I had mentioned in the first part of the series, um, it is actually very susceptible to the dominance of ITCZ, okay, as seen over here. And what actually happens is that this results in intense convectional activity, which results in high amounts of rainfall. So the convectional activity and convectional rainfall part are covered in a later part, um, most probably that part after this. Um, but what you need to know is mainly for this whole topic or this whole lecture, you just need to understand the main characteristics of um, the different climatic zones. So in the case of a tropical rainforest, your AF climate, there is roughly around 2,000 to 3,000 mm of rainfall um, annually. So this is per year. Uh, while there is also annually high temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius. So a very simple example of your tropical rainforest climate would just very simply be Singapore. So Singapore is generally found in your tropical rainforest climate whereby there is high rainfall all year round as well as extremely high temperatures. If you realize it's usually very very hot in Singapore all year round even if there is high rainfall. So for instance, if we look at a climograph, so climographs, they tend to appear in your DRQs, for instance. So if you look at the climograph of Singapore, uh, if you look at the climograph of Singapore, how climographs work is that on the left axis over here, they usually go by rainfall, right? While on the right side, this right axis over here, they would tend to label it as the temperature. So usually temperature is measured by the line that draws above. So you notice there is this line over here. So that is usually an indication of your temperature. Um, whereby in this case, if you refer to the right axis on this side, right, your temperature for Singapore is roughly around 26 to 27 degrees on average per year. right? And then on the other hand, if you look at your rainfall instead, you look at the bar graph over here. So if you look at this bar graph over here, you compare it to the left side, the left axis, which is your rainfall in mm, Right, if you add up all of the months together, you will tend to get around two thousand to three thousand mm per year. And if you notice in the uh, individual months, you notice that rainfall is generally quite high at an average of around, we say, two hundred to one fifty to 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 two hundred around that range. So, in the case of your climograph for an AF climate, your rainfall is generally very very uniform all year round. So, if you look at things like, for example, your diurnal temperature, which is otherwise known as your daily temp uh, daily temperature, or your diurnal rainfall, which is your daily rainfall, that one for AF climate is usually also generally quite high. Alright, so next we go on to the tropical monsoon climate, otherwise known as your AM climate. So your tropical monsoon climate, your AM climate, is basically where it is found beyond 5 degrees north and south. And the reason behind this is like I've mentioned in the previous video, which you can go and check it out, is part 2. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, basically, for tropical monsoon climates, because it is seasonal rainfall, you actually require the Coriolis effect to determine which places actually face this seasonal rainfall, this tropical monsoon climate. So what actually occurs is that there's around 2,000 to 2,500 mm of seasonal rainfall. So take note of the keyword here, it is seasonal. So unlike your AF climate, which is your rainforest, for rainforest, it is only um, uni uniform rainfall annually. However, for tropical monsoon, it is seasonal rainfall. So what it means by seasonal, it means that there are certain months which there is extremely high rainfall, or there are some months whereby it's extremely low. So for instance, if you look at, um, like in the previous video, if you look at your southwest monsoon, which occurs in June and July, during such months, certain areas, for instance, your when you look at Bangladesh or you look at India, there will be extremely high seasonal rainfall during this June, July, August period. 
However, you look at um, let's say another country, like let's say in the case of West Africa or East Africa, um, let's say West Africa, um, during the northeast monsoon, it may be dry instead, or even if in the case of India, it may be dry during the um northeast monsoon because of the Himalayas. So we have to look at it as a seasonal point of view instead. Um, when you look at the climate graphs, which we'll we'll see later on. So for the AM climate, there is usually high temperatures as well of around 25 degrees. The reason behind this is because the tropical monsoon climates are generally found closer towards ITCZ, which means that there is maximum insulation, so it's still quite hot. So if you look at the um, seasonal rainfall, the main reason, the underlying reason, is because of the dominance of monsoon winds. So over here, looking at the dominance of monsoon winds instead. So for instance, if you look at the tropical monsoon climates, okay, over here it's a bit blurry, but it's right. Um, you just really need to take note of two different monsoons, like I had mentioned before, and you have to look at the different cases of your Asia and your African monsoon. So this was already in the previous video, you can go and check it out. I won't explain too much, but basically just a refresher. Southwest monsoon occurs in your June-July period, while your northeast monsoon occurs in your December and January period. Right? Okay, so an example of your AM climate, like I had mentioned before, would be in the case of India. So in, in this case, we're looking at Mangalore. So if you look at Mangalore in India, what actually happens is that if you look at your climate graph, you notice that there is, okay, like, like I said, uh, left side is rainfall, right side temperature. So if you look at the case of June, July, and August, you notice that generally for these three months, the rainfall is extremely high. In fact, it can go up to around 1,000 m, which is considered a lot, which is why if you look at the later topics, when you look at floods, um, countries such as Bangladesh or India tends to flood very often in, in such months, the June, July, August period. And this is really because of your southwest monsoon, which is your wet monsoon, which brings a lot of rain. So on the other hand, if you look at, let's say, December, or you look at January and Feb, there's basically no rainfall at all. There's really like zero. If not, the most is like, what, two, five, ten, around there? Okay, and the reason behind this low levels of rainfall is because of the Himalayas mountain, which actually blocks any sort of moisture and rainfall from being deposited onto, um, in this case, the country of Mangalore in India. Right? Uh, or, or the city. La. So if you look at temperature-wise, yeah, the temperature is usually around this range. So it can be around 27, 25 to 27 degrees um, on average. Um, and this really is the trends that you will need to take note of when you are describing a climate graph. You always look at number one, rainfall. Number two, temperature. And then number three would be you have to look at the trends. So which months are there higher rainfall? And all together, when you calculate everything together, how much does it add up to? And that would really be your climate graph for your data response questions um, answers. Okay, next we look at your tropical savanna, which is your AW climate. So your tropical savanna is, is, can be a bit confusing at times because um, you may mix it up a bit with your AM climate. Okay, but basically a tropical savanna is found around 10 to 15 degrees north and south, right? It has got around 900 to 1,005 mm of annual rainfall. So this is a very, very important characteristic that you need to take note of, okay? is this characteristic of the amount of rainfall because when you're looking at a climate graph, in order to do, determine whether it is a tropical savanna or whether it's a tropical monsoon climate, you look at the amount of rainfall. So if it falls within this range over here, 9,005 to 1,005, uh, 900 to 1,005, it means that it is likely to be in the tropical savanna. So after which another characteristic that will stand out for a tropical savanna would be the 6 months of rain. So a tropical savanna, there's only 6 months of rain and 6 months without rainfall. Okay, so this is a trend you will notice in the climate graph. So temperature is also around 26 degrees because it can be found, let's say, in the North Hemisphere um, during July. Let's say ITCZ may be found in your North Hemisphere. So that would actually result in a higher temperature as well because of your maximum insulation. And your seasonal rainfall in this case is largely because of the movement of ITCZ, which brings about the trade winds. And like I had mentioned in the in part one, right? Um, when your trade winds converge, Right, they bring rainfall. Okay, and so your movement of ITCZ is what accounts for this rainfall, um, which are brought by the trade winds. So if you look at the climate graph of um uh, tropical savanna climate, okay, for instance you look at Honolulu, Hawaii. 
So this will be our conduct today. So like I said before, the left side is rainfall, right side is temperature. So if you look at rainfall, generally there is around six months of high rainfall, higher rainfall to a certain extent. Okay, so you look at January, you have got Jan, Feb, March, October, November, December. These are the generally higher rainfalls, while the middle six months of April, May, June, July, August, September tends to be of lower rainfall instead. Okay, so temperature-wise, it's around, um, it's, it's generally quite high. This temperature over here is in Fahrenheit, so take note of the uh, of the um, difference. Um, so really, your characteristic over here is you are pointing out that in the case of a tropical savanna, your rainfall is usually six months of rainfall, higher rainfall, and six months of low or no rainfall. So in order to truly determine the total rainfall, you need to add up everything and see how much it adds up to. Okay, so next we go on to your arid tropics. So the first three of rainforest, monsoon, and savanna are known as the humid tropics. Okay, when you look at the arid tropics, you're looking at first BSH and second would be your BWH, which is your desert. So when you look at the tropical steppes, okay, the tropical steppes are known as your BSH. It is found around 20 degrees north or south. Okay, so tropical steps because of like like it's it's already in its term as known as the arid climate, it actually has around hundred mm of low rainfall. So rainfall in the case of tropical steps are actually extremely low, right? And all year round, you only have around three to four months of actual rainfall. And in fact, this actual rainfall of three to four months is extremely low as well. Okay, so your your temperature. It's around the, the same as the rest, generally quite high, 25 degrees Celsius, maybe sometimes even more because of the high amounts of or high levels of aridity. But if you look at rainfall, okay, your low rainfall is largely because of the movement of STHP, which brings dryness. So in part one, I actually mentioned that when some when a place is dry, it tends to be cold. Okay, but when a place is dry, it can also be hot as well. Okay, which is why you look at your desert, it is extremely hot. Okay, so the part whereby it is cold and hot, how to determine whether it's cold and hot? It depends on the it depends on a localized factor of let's say cloud cover. And then your difference in cool and hot temperatures would vary because of the difference in for instance your um uh in difference in daily temperatures, your diurnal temperatures, which is a everyday basis. Okay, and we'll look at this more in the case of your BWH Aton. So if you look at an example of a climograph of a BSH climate, right, you look at, let's say, in this case, how hot China. Right? So in the case of China, this climograph here shows that, you see, um, when you look at June, July, and August, right, these three months are the only three months whereby rainfall is generally higher than the rest of the months. Right? So you usually have around three to four months of actual rainfall, while the rest of the months you notice that the rainfall is very close to zero. If not, it is like, yeah, it's really like nothing much. It doesn't even reach 50 at all. Okay, whereas for temperature-wise, you notice that there is also a very, very large um, varying degree. And this is largely because of the migration of STHP, which is influenced by ITCZ. So everything from Haley cell to monsoon winds to BSH, your Copen climates, you notice that all of them have a link. Okay, which is why it's important that you understand the Haley cell first. Um, which was my part one video. Okay, make sure you go and understand the Haley cell before you look at the Copen climates, because the Copen climates is the context you will set based on your Haley cell um understanding. Okay, so lastly for B BWH, how BWH works is basically your desert, right? So it's found at around thirty degrees north or south. Okay, the reason why is because STHP is largely located at 30 degrees north or south. Yes, it may migrate a bit and here and there because of ITCZ, but generally all year round, STHP is found at 30 degrees north and south. Okay, As a result of this extremely dry region of, of air, there is extremely high um, temperature okay, over here and very, very low pressure. Okay, so um, if you look at, for instance, in this case, uh, Hey, sorry, no, that there's I I I'm sorry, I correct, correct myself. There's actually extremely high pressure, okay, because you are the STHP, STHP is the band of high pressure, right? So there's very, very high pressure, okay, and low temperatures at night. Okay, you see at night. Okay, but the reason why there is high temperature, I'll explain why, okay? But anyways, you look at rainfall first, there's always extremely low rainfall annually. Okay, so all year round there's extremely low rainfall. Okay, the reason why is because of STHP, which does not 
allow for much convectional activity at all. Okay, and temperature wise, it is usually very, very high annually. Okay, so annually it can be extremely high. Okay, and the reason why I say that there, even though it is high pressure, but it can be extremely cold, or there is high pressure, but it can be extremely hot. Okay, the reason why is because of your cloud cover. So when you look at the desert, the most important factor actually is your cloud cover. Okay, if you look at a desert, because of the low amount of rainfall, there is actually very little room for evaporation. As a result of eva uh, low, uh, low, low, low evaporation rates, right, there is very little formation of clouds. So as a result, there is basically like no cloud cover at all. So when there is no cloud cover, what actually happens is that the temperature can be extremely high because the sun directly um, will, will, will enter the Earth's surface. Right? And so this will link back to your concepts on albedo. Right, which you have learned in your first few lectures of, of your school um, curriculum. So the temperature actually varies a lot because at night, it can be extremely cold. Why? Um, because of the, the lack of cloud cover as well. So when there is no cloud cover at night, actually what happens is that your desert becomes very cold. Which is why if you think about your, if you use a bit of like your, your logic and you think back to, to the, um, your, your own experiences of your understanding of a desert. Usually at night, it's very cold, right? And usually in the day, it can be extremely hot. And the largely um, accountable reason behind that is because of the presence of cloud cover. Okay, so um, in your desert, there's low or no rainfall, okay? And this is largely due to the dominance of STHP. Okay, which actually brings dryness to the entire location. So if you look at an example of a tropical um, desert climate, okay, you look at, let's say, in this case, um, chart or chat, okay, however I pronounce it, um, you notice that there is basically like no rainfall at all, right? The only few months where there's actual rainfall is June, July, August, September, but it doesn't even reach five, um, in this case, they call it in inches, la, five inches of rainfall, which is extremely low. Okay, but you notice temperature is generally quite high. Okay, in this case, it's in Fahrenheit. Okay, but then there is where you have to look at the difference in terms of diurnal temperature. So, like, I'll reiterate again. Okay, diurnal temperature is basically um, your daily temperature range. So, for instance, in the case of desert, your diurnal temperature range will have great fluctuations because during the day, it's extremely hot. At night, it's extremely cold. So, it's very low temperature. But when you look at an annual temperature range for, let's say, a desert, your annual temperature range is usually quite um, stable at a very, very high, let's say, 30 degrees, 28 degrees. And the reason behind this is because of your SHP, which brings about dryness. And on average, because of the number of hours which is actually hot in the desert, your average for the entire year, your annual temperature would be very, very, very high instead. Okay. So when you look at your exam requirements for Copen climates, your Copen climates, they really just act as a form of justification in terms of your context. So they tend to be more applicable to your DRQs, right? So in the case of DRQs, they can give you, for example, a climograph and ask you to explain or describe the climograph characteristics, which I had already stated. You describe firstly based on your rainfall, followed by your temperature, and then the pattern. So what is the trend? Is it a seasonal monsoon? Is it a seasonal uh, uh, climate? Is it a tropical savanna? What kind of climate is it actually um, in? Right? And then after that, you have to state the underlying reasons. So the underlying reasons like I mentioned would be your ITCZ, STHP, trade winds, monsoon winds, and then your continental uh, continental effect, which I'll bring in the next episode. So your ITCZ, STHP, trade winds, monsoon winds, I've already covered, right? That is part one and part two. You can go and check it out, right? Um, and those are the parts which would um, actually form your argument and underline the reason why certain climates, for instance, the mon tropical monsoon, why is it known as the tropical monsoon? It's because of the dominance of your monsoon winds instead of your STHP. So these are where your Haley style understanding has to come in so that they will act as your reasons for backing up why there are different Copen climates, which are ba basically categorized into humid and arid climates, lah, which your humid is your rainforest, monsoon and savanna, and then your arid tropics is basically your steppes as well as your desert. So that is all for the Copen climate. The next episode will cover something else, maybe on continental effect. So if you need um, a greater understanding on your underlying reasons behind the difference in the, the, the varying types of Copen climates, go ahead and check out the first part and the second part, which are already on my YouTube channel, and I'll leave the link in the description below. 
on the main reasons why such climates exist.